I've decided to start a new series called the I Miss series, where I talk about teams from the past and describe all storylines and accomplishments from a respective season. Today we'll look at the underdogs that were the 2019-20 Oklahoma City Thunder. If you enjoy content like this, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe because it helps me out a ton and I'd greatly appreciate it. So without further ado, let's dive into it. The 2018-19 Oklahoma City Thunder had just come off back-to-back -back embarrassing first-round exits. The Utah Jazz, led by a rookie Donovan Mitchell, sent the Thunder home in 2018, and Damian Lillard and the Portland Trailblazers sent them packing in embarrassing fashion in 2019. The worst part is, the Thunder had championship aspirations. After Kevin Durant left in the summer of 2016, GM Sam Presti knew he had to find Russell Westbrook some help. So after Russ's MVP season in 2017, Presti acquired Paul George from the Indiana Pacers and Carmelo Anthony from the New York Knicks to form the OK3. But as we all know, the OK3 was one of the biggest flops in NBA history. So much so that Carmelo Anthony didn't even last two seasons without getting traded. But Melo clearly wasn't the problem after the Thunder lost in the first round again. So people really didn't know what to expect from OKC headed into the 2019 offseason. But Sam Presti took the world by storm, trading Paul George to the LA Clippers for a historic trade package of Shea Gilgis Alexander, Danilo Gallinari, and five future first round draft picks. This trade would end up setting the precedent for what trades end up looking like today. OKC fans were in shambles, but at least they still had their franchise cornerstone and fan favorite in Russell Westbrook, but not for long. Six days after trading PG-13, the Thunder sent Russell Westbrook to the Houston Rockets for Chris Paul, two first round picks, and two first round pick swaps. The Rockets were coming off another solid season, but they took a step back from going to the Western Conference Finals in 2018, as they again fell to Golden State in 2019, but this time in the second round. The worst part about it is the fact that Golden State didn't even have Kevin Durant in Game 6 on the road, but that didn't stop Steph and Clay from combining for 60 and sending the Rockets home. This caused tension between Chris Paul and James Harden, and apparently their relationship was deemed unsalvageable, so the Rockets flipped CP3 for Harden's best friend in Russell Westbrook. Thunder fans were devastated as Westbrook was gone and all remnants of the original OKC Big 3 had vanished. OKC was prepared for a complete rebuild and Chris Paul's career was expected to die in Oklahoma City. The point guard was 34 at the time and had terrible hamstrings, hamstrings that some people think cost the Rockets a trip to the finals in 2018. His numbers had also completely regressed to a measly 16 points, 8 assists, and 5 boards on not great efficiencies which is good, but his trade value was essentially equal to what John Walls has been these past couple of seasons. He was just viewed as a washed up superstar on a bad contract. So when the Thunder started the season 8-12 and and CP3 was putting up these numbers, nobody was really too surprised. But then the Thunder went on a tear, going 25-11 and from that point until the All-Star break, and CP3 ended up becoming an All-Star for the first time in three years that season. The point guard was putting up numbers numbers of about 18 points, 7 assists, and almost 6 boards on 50% from the field and 35% from 3 during that stretch. But this wasn't a fluke as the Thunder continued their dominance after the All-Star break, and after starting the season 8-12, and OKC went 36-16 and before the season came to an abrupt halt. CP3 put up 19 points, 6 boards, and 7 assists on great efficiencies in his final 52 games of the regular season, and he completely changed changed the culture of the team. From expected title contenders and constant disappointment with Russ and PG to a scrappy underdog with CP3. And while CP3 was the unquestioned leader of this Thunder team, his impact rubbed off on the whole team, as Chris wasn't even OKC's leading scorer that year. Second year player Shea Gilgis Alexander was, averaging 19 points, 5 boards, and 3 assists on a solid 47% from the field and 35% from deep 
followed up by Dennis Schroeder who played six man for OKC, yet he still put up near 19 points, four boards, and four assists on 46% shooting from the field and 39% from deep a night. Schroeder was electric off the bench and their three guard lineup of CP3, Schroeder, and SGA was huge. Then there's Danilo Gallinari who averaged 19 points a game. CP3 was the fourth leading scorer on that team. And there were so many other bright spots, like OKC's duo of centers and Steven Adams and Nerlens Noel, who each had great seasons, or two-way rookie Lou Dort, who was extremely good on the defensive side of the ball. Speaking of defense, OKC was a top 10 defense in the NBA with a defensive rating of 108.1 that season, on top of the fact that they were easily the best team in the clutch that year. OKC's offensive rating went from a league average 110 10.1 to a league best offensive rating of 121.9 in the clutch and their already elite defense skyrocketed from 108.1 to 97.5 which gave the thunder a league best net rating of 24.4 in the clutch unfortunately for the thunder and the rest of the world really their incredible run would be halted by the global pandemic that was covid19 but the nba had a plan Nearly five months after the league shut down, they returned in August of 2020, but in a different form. 22 teams were held in a bubble at ESPN's Wide World of Sports Complex in Orlando, Florida. No fans or sold out arenas. Every game would be played at a neutral site around the bubble with limited friends and family as spectators. The bubble would start with each team playing eight seeding games to determine the playoff seats, followed by the play-in tournament for the eighth and ninth seeds only, and then the playoffs themselves. The Thunder would end up going four and four during the seeding games, which gave them the fifth seed in the West and a date with the fourth seeded Houston Rockets in the first round of the playoffs. This was the first round series everyone wanted to see, as not only would Russell Westbrook take on his former OKC team, but Chris Paul would face his former Rockets team and go head to head with James Harden. The storyline was almost too perfect. After getting blown out in games one and two and going down two games to nothing, Chris Paul put up a 26 point masterclass in game three, hitting multiple clutch shots and giving OKC the 12 point overtime victory. CP3 would continue this into game four, as after trailing by as much as 15 midway through the third quarter, OKC went on a run led by the point god, and they grabbed a three point victory and tied the series at two games apiece. The series ended up going the distance, as it went all seven games, and while the Thunder did lose game seven, it was an all-time classic, led by the rookie Lou Dort who dropped 30. The game went down to the wire, but unfortunately for OKC, Lou Dort ended up getting blocked on a potential game winner with about four seconds to go, and then he threw it out of bounds, leading to a Houston Rockets victory. But OKC had nothing to be ashamed of. They defied all odds and made the playoffs when absolutely nobody but he thought they could. The Thunder would later trade Chris Paul in the offseason of 2020 to officially jumpstart their rebuild that we now see today. But that's going to wrap things up for today. Let me know what you guys thought about the new style of video down in the comment section below because I had a lot of fun making it. The Thunder were truly a fun team to watch back during the bubble days and it's getting really boring with the lack of news in the offseason so I had to think of something. But I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and with all that being said, Peace.